Well, our fire-loving fans want us to start with a bang. Give me more. Well, this guy sent us this video of a bucket, and it has a bunch of matches in it. He lights it, it makes a big fireball. <laughs> That's perfect. What's up, Mythbusters? Uh, I was looking on YouTube, and I found a video where some guys got uh, 30,000 match heads, and they put them all together, and they made this great big fireball. And uh, I thought you guys could test it out, see if you could really do that with matches. According to the video, the backyard blast was made using a tin bucket, 30,000 match heads, and one slow burning fuse. But fans want to know did match heads alone create this intense inferno? The video says that they used 30,000 match heads. Now that's going to take a while. Yep, there's nothing to do though but get started. Okay. Instead of wooden matches, Adam and Jamie are slicing and dicing paper matchbooks. Judging by that bucket, I'd say I've only got a drop in the bucket. But what's key is the match heads themselves. All match heads use a potent chemical, potassium chlorate. So potent it's found in gunpowder and was widely used in early explosives. But is it potent enough to create the fireball of the fable? Well, feeling frisky after a full 10-hour day of match decapitation, the Mythbusters are itching to find out. The YouTube submission that we are replicating here today is a fan who supposedly spent hours cutting the heads off 30,000 matches, dumped them into a steel bucket, put that steel bucket in this backyard, put a little bit of fuse to it, lit it, and the thing went whoosh like that. That looks good enough to try. And instead of doing it in our backyard, well, we're going to do it in one of our favorite locations, almost our second shop, the Alameda County Sheriff's Bombing Range. The bomb range may seem like overkill, but it's better to be safe than scorched. 30,000 match heads. <laughs> yeah. Now, has anyone got a light? This right here is slow burning cannon fuse. Uh, it seems to be what they're using in the video. It burns at about uh, one foot every 30 seconds. And we just happen to have some around the shop. While Adam gets in touch with his inner pyro, Jamie explores the burning issue of match safety. You've got potassium chlorate, which is the fuel, and then you have phosphorus, which is what makes it sensitive enough to ignite. Now, in the Strike Anywheres, that phosphorus is on the white tip right here. And so you can strike it anywhere, the two chemicals combine, and you've got a fire. In the safety matches, though, the phosphorus is in the striker pad right there, and the potassium chlorate is in the match. You combine the two and they both go off. Now, we're gonna be using safety matches for our experiment because, well, they're safer. Safer, except when you strike 30,000 at once. But is this mayhem just about matches or did other accelerants fan the flame? Will these behave the way they did in the YouTube clip? Well, that's 20. We're gonna be igniting 30,000. Will they create a flame eight or 10 feet high? Only one way to find out. I love it when common materials are dangerous. Go ahead and light it. I like using the fuse more than almost anything else. So much anticipation. The fuse burns at two feet per minute. So four feet and two minutes of anticipation later. Wow. Oh, nice. That was cool. That was pretty good. It's a spectacular result. A 10 feet tall Roman candle. Burn for burn, it's the same as the blast in the YouTube video. The high speed camera confirms it. It's a match, give or take 30,000. That is about the correct height for what it showed in YouTube. Oh, yes. Look at that, wow. I thought we were looking for eight or nine foot plume of hot fire and that's exactly what we got. Based on this, I think that YouTube video is 100% correct, accurate, and true. In other words, it's myth confirmed. But before you can say, don't try this at home, Adam and Jamie are already hatching a more powerful pyrotechnic plan. <laughs> but you know we can't leave it there. Oh, I know.